guys. So we're back, and we will be do seeing a little bit more of Tarish and uh, Siegbert Tarish, <coughs> one of the top players in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Second only to Lasker. Um, yeah, Lasker was always a little bit ahead of him. And uh, here we have, I'm going to start today by seeing a game they played together. And definitely, I was reading up on this a little bit, and uh, they had some, uh, definitely a grudge between the two. Um, what, a, what was the story? They saw each other before the World Championship match. They played a World Championship match, and this was one of the games uh, we're going to see. And before the match, Tarish said to Lasker, I have only three words for you, check and mate. Check and mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, they weren't they weren't they weren't the best of friends. Um, and here we're gonna see. I maybe we could see in this game how he there was a little bit of uh, like Arr! he tightened the noose. He really wanted this win, um, and uh, he toppled the great Emmanuel Lasker. Let's see it. E four. <coughs> e four. Light brick. E5, uh, Lasker responds. So again, Tarish is white, Lasker is black. Um, and, and Lasker responds with E5, normal. Tickling the dark squares a little bit. Knight C6, defending the dark. Bishop E5, the Roy Lopez. And um, <coughs> again, in some cases, you might just take. Packing the knight, which in turn protects the pawn. If we were to take the knight, the color money would be that we would lose light, but gain dark. Always the two angles, always massaging the, the various the possibilities. Uh, knight f6, tickling the, the pawn. Okay, light, castles, white castles. And black takes the pawn. Uh, d4, d4 is played. And um, attacking the pawn. This is all. This is all the theory. This is all theory. Opening up the, the the center when the king's here in the center. Okay, there should be seven. Queen e two. All right. Attacking the knight. Attacking the pawn. Knight d six. And here the bishop's under attack. <coughs> White takes the knight. Takes the knight and takes back. He takes back towards the center. Fair enough. Well, again, what happens with the color money? What happens? Knight's attacking the bishop. Kind of needs to take. I guess he could have taken other ways, but could have traded in other ways. But he takes the knight, doubling black's pawns. But again, color money situation. White loses light. Invests five hundred light again because he's giving a thousand light for five hundred, five hundred. So he's losing five hundred light. And gaining 500 dark. That's the result. Okay, let's keep that in mind. And this bishop, interestingly, this bishop becomes a golden bishop. We'll see. We'll see how Lask was able to do with that bishop. All right. Parrish takes back with a pawn. Again, white's up on dark, and he's already attacking using that, using the pawn. Um, attacking on the dark. Okay, knight, knight b7. Now, by the way, by the way, interestingly enough, when we're ahead on dark, that means the pieces, we have more color money of pieces. If we're behind, but since we're ahead on dark, we're behind on light. If white had a chance to put his pawn back to light, he might do it. He might. Again, because classically, you're going to want, you press, you press the stronger color with pieces, and, pr and we build the weaker color with pawns. Let's see that. So again, he might put pawns on light. Let's keep in mind, e5 isn't bad, though. Certainly pretty good. A, we uh, a wedge here. Knight c3, more space. Castle, rookie one. Just building up, improving. Great, great approach to really any position. Say colors and this and that. This is all good. A lot of color ideas and how to use the color is all great. <coughs> but this is a brute tactics important to do. And from a, a very, well, every position, a con, 
super, super common. It really implies every position is find the worst piece and improve it. Rookie one, quiet and patient move, improving one of the worst pieces. Next, look at the rook and bishop out. For knight c5, we're trying to get that knight e6. When we talked about the knight e6 or d6, all the great Russian masters, Petrosian, Spassky, Karpov, were masters of the of the, these four squares, getting the knight here. They just use them to perfection. Here we are. Knight d4, knight David for trying to tickle him to f5. On f5, on f5, what color is it hitting? Dark. Not a coincidence. Not a coincidence. Okay. 96. Interesting. Son of trying to trade. He says, you know what? We'll trade on my terms. Take. Take. Knight of 5 was interesting too, but this knight is really strong, so I think White felt that, hey, it's a fair trade. It's okay. <coughs> Bishop e3. Knight takes. It trades. Bishop takes. Again, black does have the bishop pair. We saw a bunch of bishop pair ideas with Steinitz. Now we're seeing uh, here out to out, white's going to try to outplay him using the knight versus the bishop pair. But this bishop is a golden bishop, but it's stuck. And white is ahead on what color? Remember, what color is white ahead on? Dark. Example, d5 would be a terrible move. It weakens the dark. And knight a4... And we would trade the bishops, and the knight would be huge, settling on dark. What would be a good move is d6 or c5 first, even c5. Pawn on dark, getting the bishop active on light, but also rebuilding dark. They go hand in hand. Harmony lets the pieces breathe well and enjoy themselves. Bishop e3, d5. Now d5! Notice how. We said d5 no good, but only if no c5 because the dark. First dark, then d5. So again, one little twist will make a big difference. d5. Now white does take on passant, and he's good. the bishop takes back. I think if the pawn takes, ah, there was problems, right? The bishop takes, and the queen would take. Again, what color? Dark. Not a coincidence. So, takes with the bishop. These pawns are on dark. In a way, they're rebuilding the dark. In another sense, they're weaknesses, they're bugs. Fodder for, for opportunities for the white pieces. So, is it a brick or a bug? Is it a weakness or is it good or bad? That's what chess is about. Proving that your pawns, for example, here are bricks. Black is trying to prove that they're bricks. And white is trying to prove that they are bugs, that they are weaknesses. <coughs> 94. Trying to tickle the dark. This should be seven to say, you know what? Be my guest. And using showing off the light. By the way, knight takes c5. Interesting example here where the tactics and the colors merge. It, and then we win on dark, we win the pawn, but then queen g5. And then black wins. <laughs> so it's kind of using the light energy. Again, black has pieces too, and the bishop pair should not be disrespected. White says, you know what? I respect your bishop pair. Let me take your dark bishop. Well, what happens now? It's interesting. White was already ahead 500 dark. Now he gains another 500 dark. Is that clear? Because the bishop is 1,000 dark, the knight's 500, 500. So by taking the bishop, you're gaining 500 dark and losing 500 light. So now we see the imbalance. It's a $1,000 switch. Extreme imbalance. We haven't had any of these yet believe and and this is a thousand dollar balance and when it's a thousand dollar swing white's way ahead on dark black's way ahead on light for example here that's that, that's hardcore that's pretty hardcore and and that's bishop opposite colors and that's uh it's it, it's a lot it's gonna get violent strategically violent or tactically violent let's see c4 pawns on light what he's trying to do is rebuild pawns on light rebuilding <coughs> rebuilding light, rebuilding mini vision. Uh, rebuilding light. Okay, queen f6, the queen acts as. What is he using the queen for now as? A dark bishop. Light and dark. Okay. Rook d1, improving the worst piece. Trying to prove that this pawn is a bug. A backwards pawn in an open file. Which is usually can be a weakness, and here is no different. Particularly <coughs> since white has way more dark money. All right, let's see it. Rookie eight, 
What will white try? What will black's plan be trying? Maybe hit the pawn at some point? Maybe hit g2. g2 is light. Let's see that play out. Queen g4, the queen acts as. Light bishop. Trying to target g7. If queen takes. Oh, he can't take, right? He can't because if queen takes, then rook b1. It's very interesting. Rook b1. Yeah. So that's interesting. Bishop c6, rook e2, nice and patient, protecting the pawn and preparing to, 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 to get the pawn. Uh, to get to attack the pawn on d6, the dark. You could also play b3, but notice how he has does two purposes, not one but two. This uh, protects and prepares the double in the rooks. Rook e4, hitting on light, fair enough. Queen g3 tickling this, and if rook takes, you just lose two, there's too much problems if rook takes d6. Queen e6 <coughs> attacks that pawn. Queen e6 has another big threat. It's actually fun. I'm going to pause the video here. What is black's threat with queen e6 and extra credit? Look as well, please, for what the color dynamics. This is kind of cool. And how do, and to explain, now you're, you're the teacher, explain to the student how you would, you would know to look out for black's threat of queen e6. And the answer is rook g4, hitting on g2 and winning on the spot. How do you know? What is that symbolic of? How do you know to, if you're white, that rook g4 is coming? Light. It's on light. We're behind a thousand light. That's a GPS. Uh, we give us spidey sense to never, to not miss G, rook g4. That means on an on day, when we're on, in the zone, we, we won't miss it maybe anyways. Maybe. What about when we have an off day? Then the color Spidey Sense gives us that GPS. H3, rebuilding my humble humble light rebuild and taking care of that. If rook takes c4, very interesting actually. Rook takes c4. Oh, wait, wait. Rook takes c4. Rook takes c4. Yeah. Yeah, if rook takes c4, we have. Um, ah, rook takes d6, of course. Yeah. Rook takes d6. So rook d8. Then rook d2. Okay, and actually, yeah, okay. And then again, rook takes two, we're hitting d6. Rook e5. <coughs> rook e5 is fine. Um, this is a nice move. This is a beautiful move here. It's not easy. But again, using the color ideas, what can. White should be looking for colors. d6 is one for, for dark. What other dark squares could, could potentially be sensitive? So interesting, and uh, take a moment here, pause the video, and try to see what you come up with. And the answer is Bishop H6. Incredible, hitting, tickling the dark. If Queen takes, can't you can't take with a Queen because Queen takes Rook. Back rank mate, and it's pinned. Okay, so this is really nice. And if G6, then there's just so many issues on on the dark squares, long term issues. Uh, white should be massive advantage. B3. And little by little, he'll he'll just tickle the d6 pawn, and the king is so weak because he's a thousand ahead on dark, and this is, is all weaknesses on dark. Bishop h6. It's possible to find a move from pure tactics. Take a long time to look. We might find it, but you know what? Knowing that we're ahead on dark, thinking of the color ideas will be a, clue, a massive clue. We could find these big, big moves, big moves. And again, I'm gonna push you guys to this to. to you guys, all well, the students, to 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 whenever you have a golden bishop, certainly when you're ahead a thousand of a color, that's huge. You must, must, must at every juncture look. Ah, my color. What can I do with my color? Be like wild thinking, because that's that's the time to do it. Queen g6. All right, fair enough. And he's protecting the pawn. <coughs> and you can't. It's actually interesting. You can't take the rook because of g2. Lasker is a tough cookie. He's saying, hey, I got light too. But Bishop F4 is angry move, saying, no, 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 I got dark. Seeing Retarish getting the, the upper hand. He takes the pawn eventually. And now the game, he just says, you know what? No monkey business here. Let me trade queens. Trades queens. Tries to win a pawn. He says, you know what? I'm taking the pawn first. And now the thing is, he can't take this pawn because of back rank mate. 
H5, not a bad idea. <coughs> Where you just gain it. You have to make Luft anyway, you might as well gain time and try to win some other pawns. Rook D6, and, and actually Black just resigned here. Black just resigned. Um, and because the bishop is under attack, bishop goes back, you keep on harassing the bishop. The bishop here, we go, we go here. You actually just trap the bishop. It's kind of cool. You, you literally trap the bishop. Can't go here again. The pawn's on light, symbolic of a little light bishop. Here, you go b3. You force him back here, and I believe that you just, like, take, and you take, take here, and then, and then hit him here. Look at this. You hit him on light. Look at this. The final blow you hit, black, white is hitting on black. On his color, he has to go here, and then you just take all the pawns. Just take all. Maybe you have three first. If you have this. But uh, it's just over. Too many pawns. Hit him on light. Yeah. All right. An interesting game. Really interesting game. Um, showing bishops the colors and how the colors uh, play out there. Well, let's see. Maybe one more <coughs> for today. And uh, this was a game, here we have a game between Tarish and M Mises, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Happened in Germany. Mises is a very strong player. D4. E E4. There's a French defense, knight c3. We're protecting. He takes, knight takes in the center. Knight f3. This game was also, we have, we have a golden bishop situation. Really nice. Okay, knight f3, knight, knight f6. Pieces get traded. He says, you know what, I'll trade on my terms. Preparing the bishop. Oh, bishop b7, getting the bishop out. He castles. He takes, no problem. Bishop takes. Knight f6, fair enough. Bishop d3. Now b6. You know, here's the thing about this gate, this kind of opening. Black is solid, but this is a bad bishop. So they often play it's called the problem bishop. B6 is played. Problem bishop. Get it out. 95. 95 is... Notice, though, how the light squares get weak. And 95 tries to jump in. It's a classic game. I remember seeing this years, years ago. When I was a kid. and really made an impression. How it's nothing is simple in chess. How you And early on, you could pounce. One little mistake. B6... And then already there's issues. Because bishop e7, the problem is that there's a check, and then you can't castle. This doesn't work. Light scores. Just jumping on the light. So easy to play. Like, oh, bishop out and play. No, think of the colors. Think of the squares. Think of the colors. 95. He plays, he castles. Knight c6 is played, forking the queen and, and, and bishop. Now, at this point, white wants to take the bishop. Would like to. By taking the bishop, he gets the golden bishop. It's pretty good. That being said, when you see a good move, look for an even better move. What's the what's the good in-between move? You pause, please. Look for an even a, a nice little tactic possibility for a little more of a squeeze before taking the bishop. Notice the rook is in, in bad shape. The knight's terrorizing these the, 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 the queen side. How can white infuse a little bit before investing in dark? Gain some light. Or, or get a little light juice. Use the light. And the answer is queen f3. The, ta the threat is queen knight takes bishop, threatening to win the rook. Bishop e7 does not work again. You just take the bishop, check and take the bishop. So bishop d7 is the only move really. <coughs> rook was trapped. It was kind of. And now you take it again. Notice, just because a move gets a good imbalance doesn't mean it's the best move. You might be able to do a preparatory move, an intermezzo. Get a little extra. Get the uh, get in a tempo here. So, queen f3. Now you take this bishop is not that well placed. It would rather be on an open diagonal. Finchetta. And now again, we know we have a golden bishop. Three steps. First step, know you have it. Step two, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Think ah, we dominate the guard. And step three is find a way to use it. Here, bishop g5 is a, certainly a good step. Pinning, very annoying pin. If h6, you just go back. You can't really play g5. It's too open. 
rookie, rookie here. Rookie one. Queen H2. Look at this. White's ahead on dark. Again, by 500, right? By 500. Bishop for a knight, $500 of dark. <coughs> but looking to hit on light as well. Knight's pin. Black says, you know what? Never mind. I think H6. What was the problem? H6 may, may have not worked. The problem with h6, you just take and it's just it's just over. It doesn't work. Queen gets in and there's rook. There's no way to defend. If the knight moves, you get made it. This is a good pattern to, rec to remember. All right. So all right. Queen d6 says, you know what? You could take the take the knight and then take the pawn. Looks good, right? And it is good. But look at this better. You do it takes. It doesn't take the pawn. He wants the mate because take the pawn, the king runs away and the game goes on. I remember this made a big impression on me, this this move. And guys, if you want to pause here, White has a lot of light. How does he inject a little dark juice and try to bait the king? Take take a take a moment. And the answer is Queen H6. Looking to take and then mate. Again, the the old, the old pattern, bishop take. Okay, check, check, check to mate. Okay. Queen Axe has a dark bishop. Only one way to the Good harmony, dark bishop, dark energy. F5. Now the rook comes in and tries to mate him again. It's it's overwhelming. He goes queen takes. And now the final blow. The queen is helping on dark. The final blow is really funny. It's so delicate, so delicate. And if you want to pause here, it's very satisfying. I would I would take a pause and, and really try to think it through and see what white could do. It's very sometimes the quietest of quiet moves do the job, especially black's positions hang on a thread. And the answer is pull on to c3. Final dark brick. If the queen moves anywhere besides the diagonal, you check and mate. And there's no there's no squares. The rook is helping on dark. Queen's on dark. If you go here you get you lose the queen. And if you go here it's funny now there's no escape route for the king. Now one can say there's a tactic it just wins. But it's symbolic of dark. Symbolic. White invested in dark, and the finish was dark. Outplaying him on the dark spurs. So, <coughs> nice little games. Uh, this game, particularly fancy game. Um, and uh, again, we saw the, the previous game against Lasker, opposite color bishops, very fierce. Positional color, like slow, uh, battling for whose color is more valuable. Here we have another case of uh, imbalance where the golden bishop uh, did the job. And um, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please, of course, uh, you know the Discord will be having chats about this. And uh, looking forward to hearing your uh, questions. Thank you very much, and see you next time.